Well, yeah, it's a little strange as we go into conference play. We've only had one game and what would almost be uh, two weeks after having six games in a short period of time. But as we talked about all season, you know, it's, it's going to be adjustments. There's going to be differences. Uh, it's not going to be the norm. Um, we tried to get the game this week. We just couldn't get a game. And because of that, uh, we got a little rest that was during finals, and we got some practice time, and that's been good for us. But uh, starting Big Ten plays against Northwestern, uh, we'll be right back to the grind. We got five games in 14 days, so things heat up quick, including the Christmas Day game against Wisconsin. Uh, in Northwestern, it's a talented young group. I mean, they had a pretty good team last year with those freshmen. They were getting better as the year went on. They had one kid leave, and of course their point guard left, but they've got a couple kids back. The Bowie kid who had a lot against us is back. Um, I thought they've done a good job. They've got a couple of transfers, but Nass and Young, Cop and Barron are all good players that have got a lot of experience. They've only played four games. They've had some interruptions too by maybe the other teams, not necessarily theirs. Uh, as I said, Bowie got 26 last year. Uh, that's a two games worth. And uh, Cop leads the team at 16 per game right now. He can really shoot it at 6'7", and is one of the better, I think, shooters in the whole Big Ten. So they've got enough guys. They've got different guys. They're playing faster. They've got some a transfer and a couple of young kids in there that make them more athletic. And as we say, you know, they run a lot of stuff. Chris is a good coach, so uh, they had Pitt beat. Uh, they were up 18. They were up five, I think, with a minute left. And then Pitt went down and killed Miami, who beat Purdue. What does it mean? Normal years, it would mean a lot. This year, I don't know, because I don't know who's sick, who's not sick. But I know this. It's a very well-coached team. They're better than they were last year, in my opinion. And it'll be our first conference game, so we're looking forward to it. Well, I, I think the chemistry and camaraderie of this team is so much uh, better than I thought it would be at this point in time. And I, for all the negatives of COVID, that might be one of the positives because I think we just banded together. I think we've seen, uh, you know, both Rocket Watts and Foster Lawyer have really adjusted to some things and are playing better. I know that Josh Langford's as healthy as he's been in three years. And... Uh, I think even though we don't look like it statistically right now, I think we still could be one of the better defensive teams I've had. Uh, didn't know that at the time. And, um, you know, been a little disappointed still with our turnovers. I thought we'd take care of the ball a little bit better. So there's a couple of pluses, a couple of minuses. But in general, if I put a cap on the whole thing, um, I'm trying to be... Uh, excited about where I think we are and where I think we can go. And I'm keeping that kind of down because I'm not sure what some of the teams have been like that we've played. Uh, so I'm, uh, I think we've made big progress. I think we're playing better. I think teams are shooting better against us than I thought they would, especially from the three. And uh, yet we've played some very good guards and so I don't know if that answers your question real well, Jack, but uh, I know this. Uh, a month ago, I was uh, not in practice. So since I've been back, uh, uh, it's been more of a joy for me, probably less of a joy for them. Or 
You know, I, d I don't, Chris. I don't have a target date, and I think some of the players will determine all that. Like I said, there's not a lot of separation, as you know, from certain guys, and uh, we think A.J. would have been a guy we would have worked in earlier, but, you know, he had the two and a half weeks out with the knee, and, uh, you know, inside, I mean, I've had some meetings with Julius and Marcus and Thomas, and, you know, I keep hoping that we... Uh, one guy steps up a little bit more above the other, but you and I both know you can't play them equally uh, as conference season comes in, but we might have to sacrifice a little early, and I think that's part of the turnover problem. I think that's part of the inconsistency at times, and maybe a lapse here or there because they're not as comfortable with each other yet. Even though the chemistry is good, you got to be comfortable on the court. But I still think in the long run, it's going to benefit us. And that's the way I'm looking at it. So I'm going to let the players determine some of it. I'm going to have to do a good job with my staff and trying to separate them. But right now, um, there's a lot of people that would like to have 11 players that they're playing or 10. And uh, I'm going to try to enjoy that a little bit. And even though it's a headache in some ways, it's... Uh, Nobody's really dropped down too much, and nobody's really stepped up too much as far as those 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th guys, or 8th, 9th, 10th, 11 guys. Well, you get to watch games on TV. You know, you see that. There's conference games started in different conferences. That's brought a little normalcy to everything. And and uh, today we celebrated. I, I'm i going to have to tell our profs at Michigan State it should be illegal to give a final on the last day of, of the semester. You know, give them Wednesday and Thursday. But we had two guys that took their last one this morning. And, uh, you know, so it's been a strange week. And that re reflect, as I reflect back, it's been a, strange week because we'd hope to have a game. You never have a game during finals, but the situation's different. Uh, we couldn't have a game. Then you had finals, and so we practiced a few different times, but it wasn't interrupted too bad. We were able to find a couple pockets. And uh, now we're just heading forward. You know, we'll have a good practice here this afternoon, hopefully a good one tomorrow, and then play the game on, uh, on Sunday. You know, I, I guess for the last couple of years, I keep saying it's it's deeper. But I really think this year it is. I think there's more power. I mean, I, I get amazed how some conferences, I still think sometimes we don't get the respect we deserve. You know, a team loses a game or something, they drop 10 spots. And other teams, it doesn't happen that way. I still think we've got four top 10 teams. I think we've got four more, five more top 20 teams. And uh, and then I saw where we had a couple teams. I mean, we're we're 10, 11 deep as far as the top 35, and and I'm not sure that's ever been that way. But there's a lot more experienced teams too. You know, you look at an Iowa, you look at a Wisconsin, you even look at Illinois. They're very, very experienced and uh, have you know seven, eight of their top nine or ten back, and and uh, all well coached. So I. I think teams have tested themselves. You know, Illinois lost a tough game or two, but, uh, you know, Iowa's playing awfully well. I think they played Gonzaga this weekend. Uh, Wisconsin lost a tough game at Marquette at the buzzer, and other than that, they've been playing real well. And so we'll see. You know, I think the sleeper team in this group right now might be Rutgers. Um, you know, I always thought they'd be good, but when they lost uh, Ola, Ola, Ola Remy or whatever, can't, I, I can't pronounce his name right now, but when they lost the kid to Oregon, uh, that was a big loss. And boy, they've just kind of, Harper has been unbelievable. And uh, Geo Baker just starting to play. I think they're maybe as good a team. I, I'm not sure they're not a top 10 team. So uh, 
Lee's going to be very good. I think Josh is going to take a much, much bigger leap. I really do. I'm pretty happy with the rotation. You know, uh, you know, Foster has has played pretty well. We got to we got to get uh, AJ in there a little bit because he can play a lot of different positions. But uh, we're not going to manage Josh's minutes, but we're going to make sure that you know we get some consistency now. Uh, Aaron shouldn't play 12 minute stretches. You know. That'll be the next part of this that we have to do. You know, Josh misses a game. It changed some things up. But I'd like to get now where there's some consistency as far as how we're rotating. And uh, I think that will happen. And when it does, I think we'll be a better team. But I also think uh, in Josh's case and in Joey Hauser, um, they're going to get better. There's no question. Josh has probably had the best week of practice. He looks more athletic to me. Joey's starting to shoot the ball real well again, and I think those two guys will determine a lot. Rockets, he's really playing well. I mean, he's really distributing the ball well, and uh, I just love how he's been, and just in watching film, school's done, you know. That's a, that's a load for some of these guys. and So I think we're going to get better, but I think on the perimeter, um, the rotation's pretty good. It's now just getting it down to where they're not playing 10-minute stretches. Uh, we haven't had much foul trouble. That's been good other than Joey, and uh, hopefully that'll continue. Well, as we always do, you know, we're trying to give Marcus and Thomas, you know, experienced guys some. But I told Julius in the last game, I walked down to the bench with seven minutes left, and I was going to put him back in, and I said, listen, it's okay with you. I'm going to try to get Marty some minutes because we need to do that. And I actually apologized to him because he had been the one guy that started to separate himself. But Julius is a is a rock. I mean, he's a very intelligent kid. Um he probably is one of my most improved players. If you look at his shooting, his ball handling, his defense, and I think uh, he's going to be very valuable. So it wasn't any other reason than the coach was looking at, you know, what I could do, and I knew he would understand. I knew he was in a good place. But, yeah, Julius Minutes is one guy that I think is going to start going up uh, a lot, and, uh, and deservingly so, because he has – taking some steps and uh, you know the only reason I didn't especially in the last game was uh, trying to get you know maybe uh, some minutes for Madi because I think Madi we're going to need and yet harder to do that as Big Ten play starts at least at the beginning. Yeah, and that's one of the things with Aaron and Josh and, and Rock and Joey. That's where uh, Thomas Kithier has been so valuable because he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He doesn't need the ball all the time. Um, he sets great screens. But I think Julius can do some of that too. Uh, you know, the X factor right now is, well, you know, we need to get Marcus going. And as I said, you know, between – not gaining the weight in the summer, there's been some issues, but at the same time, I still think he can really help us. And, he, and you know, we've played a lot of smaller teams, as you know. I mean, even Duke was probably as small as they've been. 
and that's not conducive for the number of bigs either. So I think uh, there were times we played Malik more as a four or five, and I think we'll be able to get into a little better rotation as, you know, like Northwestern, for example, has got a lot of big guys, and uh, I think that'll be better for some of my bigs. Thanks, You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, with the Northwestern, uh, they're not going to shoot, or maybe not, might not make 14 threes uh, every single night. But you mentioned the troubles that you guys have had this year from defending the three. So, how, how do you view this game, I guess, when it comes to them and what they're able to do in that aspect? Well, we're really we're worried about Bowie last year because he really 26 points and he had a lot of threes, but. The Baron Kid and uh, Nance can shoot threes at 6'10", and um, they've got a couple other guys that are shooting the ball very well right now. And, uh, you know, they haven't played the toughest of competition, so you don't know if some is that. But the one thing about three-point shooting, as you mentioned, it doesn't matter who you're playing against. You still got to make the shot. And to make 14 in the game, you know, we had Oakland make 18. Um, those are concerns for us. We thought... The Oakland game, a lot of them were more contested than maybe the the uh, game against uh, Notre Dame or something like that. Uh, we've run into three or four really good guards that um, can get shots up. And, uh, you know, probably should have made some adjustments, maybe with how we cover some of those ball screens. It's not always fair to the guard. But uh, I think we've had some time, Audrey, to work on that this week. I think uh, you'll see us do a better job. Uh, but this team, at times, can put five guys on the floor that can make threes. And uh, that's going to be uh, important that we do a better job. And then one quick question about Aaron Henry and the conversations or what you know about his uncle Herb and how you feel as though maybe him playing wheelchair basketball with him or how, how does that relationship work and, and just – Yeah, well, like how fast things can be taken away, you know, too, because Herb went through some some tough things. But him and Aaron have been very close, and he's a guy that, man, I remember when uh, he was in high school even, he came up from Louisville at the time for games. And, uh, you know, I think they have a very close and good relationship, and uh, he loves the game, you know. It's just a shame that he's in a wheelchair. But... Uh, I think you can you can still learn from them, and I still think they're very close. And um, you know, it's not something I talk to Aaron about all the time, but I know that his uncle is very important in his life, and I think he's very important in the basketball part of his life. And so, what can Aaron learn? Um, you know, whenever I see somebody who's gone through some tough times, I always say, appreciate how lucky you are, and do everything you can do to 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 make sure you take care of yourself in the best way you can take care of yourself. That's a lesson in itself. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have time for two final questions before Coach has to get to practice. We'll start with uh, Jack Edling and wrap up with Larry Light. Jack? Tom, as much as you love football, uh, are you going to be more interested in Ohio State Northwestern, uh, Big Ten Championship game, or Gonzaga, Iowa tomorrow at noon? No, I can't, but, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why Brian would say something like that. I don't know what he said in what context and how it was taken, but it's not like Michigan State or our city, our basketball program, or Notre Dame or theirs. Um, we're in some tough times, you know. Uh, I was on a big call yesterday, you know, what do you do at Christmas, you know. We know some of these football programs – I've had parents up at Thanksgiving and that, and that created some problems. I mean, this is no fun for anybody. I would look at it like this, me personally, and again, I haven't talked to Brian, and uh, I don't know in, in the context, because I don't trust you guys all the time, no insult intended. But um, I would always rather play. I mean, I, I don't think I can hold a, 
a, a, a school hostage, a, a program hostage, a team hostage. I think the best thing for my guys is to get to play. And uh, I don't think we're in a position, any of us, to say we won't play if the parents can't come. I'd love to have the parents here. I am a little, it is, seems a little crazy to me at times when you have a 80,000 seat arena, but those are rules far beyond me, far beyond our school and our program. And um, God, I hope they get to go to the Rose Bowl. I hope my second semester, my, my parents get to be here, but uh, uh, that doesn't register to me real well because it's not like somebody's doing it on purpose. Um, everything that's trying to be done is in the best safety and interest of the players first, family second, hopefully our damn country. And uh, that's the way I look at it. But I, I really, again, hard to comment, Jack, on something that I haven't seen or I haven't talked to him because I think sometimes we have a tendency in the media, I know you guys wouldn't do this, but where you take one little part and uh, so, I wouldn't boycott the NCAA tournament if the parents could be there. I'd do everything in my power to try to hope and pray and and work so the parents could be there. But I I I, I don't know. You caught me off guard. Last question. We'll go out to Larry Lake. I'll try to give you a layup, Tom. Okay. Yeah. No, and that could hurt us. But two reasons. You know, we had to give them a couple days off because of finals. And then we decided that let's work on some of the things that we think we haven't been as good at. Some things in ball screen defense, some with our zone offense, uh, some things with um, our regular offense. And then we picked apart, you know, what do we think we're not doing well? Like one thing, we're rebounding pretty well stat wise. But we're not getting any rebounds on the rim. They're all on the floor. Hell, you can get them on the floor. You know, I need guys jumping over you, getting them on the rim. So we looked at some things. We've had each assistant. We marked down some things. What do we got to get better at? And we've tried to still make the practices lively and a little bit fun. It's a grind, you know. You got the pandemic and you got finals. Um, none of us have been through both. And uh, all of us probably have been through uh, finals. You know, I, I, I think uh, looking at this illustrious group, I think all of you went through finals at one time or another. And because of that, that's, that's work in itself. And then when you throw in the pandemic, so we're just trying to always keep our, our players right now in the right frame of mind, which I think we are. Today will be a little more grinding. We're going to get after it, get up and down a little more because we're done. Tomorrow you can't do that day before a game. So I, I do worry about that a little bit. It's a good question because, you know, we thought about bringing officials in and trying to do something that's a little harder now than it used to be. You almost got to project out of four or five days. We thought we might be playing a game Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So it's just another confusing part of this for those guys. Hopefully it doesn't hurt us on Sunday, but we think we did – what we think was best for our team, and that's what we're trying to do. I don't sleep on my hops. On who? I don't sleep on my hops. I'm rebounding. Larry, I've seen your hops. I'm not only sleeping, I'm snoring while I'm sleeping, and I don't snore. So, uh, but I'll, I'll try to I'll try to remember that, and uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you guys again now because we'll have a couple different. But stay safe, and uh, thanks for. The interest, hopefully, was we'll, we'll try to get together soon. You know, if somehow maybe we'll have a maybe we'll have something through the windows or something, so at least you can come. But we'll we'll try to keep doing something. I hope the players has been good, and and I said we're always open for some suggestions, especially now schools out. If that we can make it more access to make it better for you, that'll be my Christmas present to you. Take care.